Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Librarian Show with Mr. Evans. On today's show, you may know how to assassinate people, but can you do it like a lady? An unstoppable mixed martial artist who kicks everyone's butt, but then meets a girl who makes him think about not kicking everyone's butt anymore. Also, bad girls don't die, but this one loves to take Polaroid pictures. A fatal accident at an amusement park that answers life's biggest question. And a young man who seduces the mayor's daughter so he can assassinate the mayor. How romantic. Let's get started. Etiquette and Espionage is about a finishing school for young ladies. In the real world, finishing school is a place for young ladies to learn how to act like an aristocrat, how to be proper, refined, and ladylike in an upper-class world. In this novel, finishing school means learning all of that and then some, including the fine art of death, diversion, and espionage, which is just a French word for spying. Thanks, France! And it takes place in the world of steampunk, which is a really cool type of science fiction that takes place a few hundred years ago in England, but is full of futuristic weapons, machines, and vehicles, all powered by steam. Let's take a look. Welcome, my dears, to Mademoiselle Geraldine's Finishing Academy for Young Ladies of Quality, an institution of high learning higher manners, and the fine art of finishing others. This is not a school for spies. This is not a school for assassins. This is a school for gentlewomen. But should you happen to finish and become one of the Empire's deadliest weapons, please remember discernment and discretion are of the utmost importance. Oh dear, we'll have to do something about that. Welcome, debuts. Welcome to finishing school. Etiquette and espionage is a page turner and a can't miss. Come check it out. What's next? I will admit that I'm a little biased here because I love combat sports, especially mixed martial arts, or MMA. But Caged Warrior is an awesome book even if mixed martial arts doesn't appeal to you. It has action, romance, family issues, and really interesting characters. The novel is based upon McCutcheon Daniels, a young man whose father, a former boxer who just missed out on becoming champion of the world, raises McCutcheon Daniels to be a fierce and dangerous mixed martial artist. As fierce of a fighter as he is, though, he loves his five-year-old younger sister, Gemma, with all of his heart, and basically raises her because of his abusive and horrible father. They actually do this really adorable thing. When his little sister is scared, he gets down on his knees, holds her hand, looks into her eyes, and says, Who's tough? And she answers, I'm tough. And then he asks, how tough? And she says, so tough. It's adorable and it makes her feel better every single time. It's a really touching part of the book. But since McCutcheon is only 16, he can't legally fight in MMA tournaments. So his father puts him in, in underground MMA tournaments that are super illegal and super dangerous. Time and time again, McCutcheon Daniels kicks everyone's butt, earning his father a lot of money, which his father just uses to fuel his multiple addictions. But things get complicated when McCutcheon meets Caitlin, who steers him away from fighting and towards her and towards a first class education at an amazing school. I like this Caitlin girl already. Things take a turn for the worst when the father finds out about all this and in an attempt to keep his son fighting and making money to fuel his addictions, the father kidnaps his own daughter and tells McCutcheon that if he stops fighting, he'll kill her. Wow. 
What a decision to make. McCutcheon is at a total loss at what to do, but he finally decides that he wants you to read the book and find out on your own. McCutcheon Daniels. What's next? Do you feel like your life and family are dysfunctional? If so, you have a lot in common with Alexis, the protagonist of Bad Girls Don't Die. Let's take a look. A lot of people shoot digital pictures, which is fine, it's just not for me. Taking a great digital picture is like finding something, but working with film, it's like making something. Besides, every minute I spend in my darkroom is a minute I don't have to spend thinking about the complete train wreck that is my life. Like my parents, who hardly notice my existence except to remind me what an utter disappointment I am. And my sister, whose creepy doll collection has totally taken over her life. And the cheerleaders, who would love to get back at me for almost getting them all kicked off the squad. And then of course, there's him. The boy I can't get out of my head even though he's so totally not my type. So yeah, can you blame me for preferring to spend all of my spare time alone in my dark room? God knows there's nothing else going on in this stupid town. are pretty dead around here. If you're into ghost stories, give this one a look. What's next? The Five People You Meet in Heaven is a story that is loved by many, many people for very good reason. Our main character is a war veteran and a man of advancing age. He works at an amusement park, fixing rides, and he feels like he sort of wasted away his life. One day at work, he dies while trying to save the life of a little girl, only to wake up in the afterlife. The afterlife in this book is unique because it's actually a place where five people, some that you knew and some that were strangers, explain your life back to you. <clears throat> it's through these interactions with people who were connected to him during his life that he begins to realize that just perhaps his life was more meaningful and important than he once thought. Now, you might think that's a rather simple approach to the afterlife five people having a chat with you about your life. And it totally is. But simplicity can be powerful. In literature, poetry is beautiful and profound because it attempts to be as brief and condensed as possible. In science, a principle by the name of Occam's razor suggests that the simplest possible hypothesis is usually the right one. So remember that simplicity is divinity. And so is the five people you meet in heaven. What's next? I must assassinate the mayor. Boy Nobody is always the quintessential new kid in school. He slides under the radar and nobody gives him a second thought. Each time he relocates to a new school under a new name and makes new friends. However, each time he relocates, someone in the family of one of his new friends mysteriously dies. 
he assassinates them. Boy Nobody's newest assignment is the mayor of New York City. Tough assignment, tough to get access to a mayor for sure. Let's take a look. Son, nice to hear from you. How was your day? Great, I met a new friend. First day in a new school and you have a friend. That's very good. She invited me to a dinner party at her dad's house. What's the place like? It's got a nice view. Meeting the mayor is a once in a lifetime event. I hope you get to spend some time alone with him. That is my assignment, though this one is pretty high profile. Well, good student like you, your special skills, you'd have no problem finishing his homework. Oh, by the way, your mother says hello. She's with you. She is? And she's very concerned. She doesn't like excuses. You know how your mother is. Tell him not to worry. I have all the tools I need to finish this job. And son? Yeah, Dad. When the party is over, text us. We want to make sure you get home safe. Daddy? This is Ben. It's an honor to meet you, sir. Boy Nobody's struggle in this book is often with himself because he really wants to be good and lead a normal life. And to do so, he has to fight against his upbringing and his own family, really. So in some ways, this is an allegory of principle. It's a war within, a self-struggle, a crusade of character, an autonomous offensive, a subjective salvo. Mr. Evan! Sorry, I get a little carried away sometimes. I went on an alliterative affront. A luscious deluge of a literary device. Evan! Sorry. The story is action-packed and violent, making this book literally killer. Anyway, that's it for another episode of The Nerd Librarian Show with Mr. Evans. As always, be good to each other, monsoons.